Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone to our panel entitled Streaming Forward. It's really an honor to be with you all today. My, I am your moderator. My name is Dr. Dana Suleiman. I'm an assistant professor of material science and bioengineering at King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. I'd like to start us off today with just the motivation behind this panel. And that really starts with the pandemic. All right, so the pandemic has created a big inflection point in many industries worldwide. So for us to be able to proactively react to the pandemic and other global challenges, there is a need for what we're calling today generation transformation. And the question here is, how are we instilling in our youth the skill sets in order to be pioneers at tackling these global challenges? The other question is, why is what we call STREAM, not just STEM, a very important and powerful tool to effect change? I hope I can guide our conversation today to address these topics alongside a distinguished panel of guests. First, I'd like to introduce you to Gitanjali Rao. She is an inventor, she is an aspiring scientist, as well as an author and an avid promoter of STEM worldwide. She's been recognized worldwide for her contributions and her inventions, for example, by Forbes 30 Under 30 in science, as well as Time's top young inventor. Please help me in giving Gitanjali a very warm welcome to Saudi Arabia. Our next panelist is engineer Suraka Al Khatib. Engineer Suraka is a co-founding member of U-Turn Entertainment. He's also an Endeavor entrepreneur. He is now a, a MISC 2030 leader, and he's joined us from Elixir Management Consultancy, where he was a partner, as well as a senior VP at McKinsey & Co. He's also held multiple board positions in both the public and the private sector. It's really an honor to be sitting alongside you today. Thank you. All right. So I'd like to start off our discussion today reflecting on the pandemic and pandemic-driven disruptive technologies and digital transformations. So Engineer Saraka, can you help us consider um, why was the pandemic such an inflection point and what did that mean for various industries? Uh, the way I look into it, I mean, uh, the world went into multiple inflection points and inflection points is 10x change. And this pandemic kind of expedited as if it's a third world war, Allah Hamana, without a war. But all the implication of a third world war was uh, uh, witnessed during the pandemic. So everything between, within a course of two years twisted and was, unless it's digitalized all the way, we're missing the point. And I think here it made a big a shift in the global scene to say, are we really capable and, and, and ready for it, or we're we just only digitizing, i.e., turning the experience behind the screen or turning a full immersive digitalized experience? And I think this was a pivot point where, alhamdulillah, in Saudi, we, we witnessed how Saudi was to some extent prepared where life did not stop. But nevertheless, the race has started. And now everybody's catching up to say, okay, if this is going to be the new era, what are we doing about it? So to me, the inflection point means a transformational generation and not transitional. It's fundamentally shifting. And unless we are ready, equipped with all the socioeconomics behaviors to equip and be ready to address it, we're just taking the tip of the iceberg and not understanding that it's a major shift in the, in the universe. Thank you. And, and what we saw with the pandemic as well is that it's not just up to governments as well as you know, international organizations to react and to be proactive. It's also up to communities to come together as well as individuals within those communities to be proactive and to be part of the change. So, um, Gitanjali, I'd like to ask you, what role did society or community play in enabling you as a young scientist to achieving your goals? Yeah, uh, first of all, assalamu alaikum. Thank you for the opportunity to <laughs> be because, here yeah. today. It truly is an honor to be here speaking to all of you. Um, I guess I'll kick this off by saying the society played a huge role in the person who I am today, right? And a lot of positive applications as to why I'm here, why I'm speaking. But the biggest one was access to 
the community, mentors, experts when I needed it the most. Um, as a young student in the science field, it's very easy to be undermined for your abilities, especially in the scientific thinking world. And so having that support system of experts and, you know, experts from colleges as well as from research papers that I had read who were willing to, you know, take that opportunity to reach out to me, work with me to bring ideas to life and also offer me lab spaces at a young age was a huge part of my mission. Along with that, um, a lot of great resources. Um, so along with papers, articles that I get from accessing online resources that the community puts together. Um, a big part of my work is actually built on open source technology, right? So from reading articles that we see out there with existing technologies, for example, carbon nanotube sensor technology. So I utilize that and take its applications and turn it into something that is able to tackle a problem that I have more of a connection to as well. Um, and last but not least, and what we're seeing an improvement in is how society is able to contribute to funding, especially for students, right? Um, I always maintain a self-funded approach when it comes to my own work um, by applying to competitions and working with organizations and investors. And we're seeing more and more support for teenagers, especially high schoolers. And so it's been awesome to have that support full time and I hope to see it grow more and more. I hope every youth out there gets the opportunity needed to have the support that I did at a young age. Thank you. I got really excited when you said carbon nanotubes. <laughs> That's what my students are working on right now. And it's really interesting. I think, Gitanja, you're about 17 years old. 16. 16 yeah. years old <laughs> even. And my PhD students in the lab are working on similar technology. So you can really see the demonstration of not just intergenerational dialogue and conversation, but I'm actually inspired by you. I'm an older generation, but I'm inspired by what you do. And we see um, this dialogue really helping as well, not just in our conversations now, but in science. Science requires a lot of collaboration between people of different mindsets and different backgrounds as well as different ages. All right, so now let's uh, consider what we're talking about as the title, Stream, and let's consider how a stream-based mindset can empower our youth with the skills to tackle these global challenges, whether it's sensors, healthcare, global warming, and so on. So we'll start from uh, the basics, and maybe if you can very quickly tell us what does STEM mean to you? Yeah. Um, STEM is as simple as science, technology, engineering, and math is what it stands for. It's a huge foundation for any sort of innovative idea always works off of this STEM mindset, and we use it in almost everything that we do. But increasingly, it's given way to the, almost a single stream path. Um, you know, turning STEM into only specific concepts, like we were talking about earlier, coding and robotics, and not expanding much further beyond that as well. So we're looking at more of this inclusive aspect towards STEM and how to really make it a broader message for people to be able to look at STEM as something that they can do every single day as well. And I like, I like what you said about a broader approach because now what we're talking about is not just STEM, we're taking it further and we're saying we want to use STREAM. And so that takes the idea of STEM, uh, makes it more comprehensive by adding two new letters. And the first letter is R, and that stands for reading. So I'd like to ask you, Engineer Sarapa, to tell us um, why do you think it's so important to emphasize reading in our approach? I think in this time and age where screen became the, the mode of education, or at least people are consuming content through the main screen, their attention span is kind of dropping, and even their imagination is being bound by whatever they see. And I think raising back to a key principle, going back to reading as a main aspect, that means you, you'll read, you'll comprehend, you'll think, and then you'll make a judgment. That by itself gives you a, a good bandwidth to really have an opinion versus just the consumption of, of a video content or, or a, an online content. So I think the R is playing a big factor in, in the stream and definitely the A where, where the art comes about. Because at the end of the day, it is really an artistic uh, journey where once it's, it's uh, not either a right brain or a left brain, it's a comprehensive of all those. And I think Apple was, was the first to tap in those design features where design elements was artistic in its way that became uh, consumer friendly and people start enjoying it. So I think looking into it beyond the boundaries of STEM, i.e. the robotics and taking it into its granularity, the whole idea of equipping our youngsters with the right skills to be major players in setting up or participating in shaping the future 
by having more people uh, acknowledging STEM or science or stream in that, that aspect. Because unless we are a major player in the, in the shaping up the future, we'll be consumers. That means we're not in, in a time and age where data is the currency, that means we will not be an active participant. We're gonna, just going to be consuming whatever out there. So we need to make sure that our youngsters are learning the right skills because 70% of the jobs are not even invented. So it's all about really giving them the right skill set for them to be an active participant. And I love that you say an active participant. One thing is that we need to take STEM, but also bring it to the broader community, right? And one of the, the, the important things that I think that arts can add to STEM is through scientific communication. One of the biggest challenges for us scientists, particularly my students and first year students, um, when they're starting a new invention or a technology or a platform, is how can they communicate this very complex concept or idea that they have to a layman audience and one of the best ways of doing that is through a very simple illustration or a design something that requires creativity and definitely a bit of arts all right so I'd like to shift gears a little bit now and look through the lens of a dreamer I'd like to take our audience uh, towards the future and help us imagine what next generation technologies that these stream students will be able and, and stream youth will be able to tackle in the future. So I'd like to ask you, Gitanjali, um, when I say the word next generation technology or next generation platform, what does that mean to you? What does it look like? And um, what global challenges will they help us address? Yeah, there's quite a few you know, growing technologies out there that we see. Um, the biggest ones that I would like to highlight and I think is going to be a huge shifting factor is personalized medicine. So what that means is the applications of genetic engineering and genomics to be able to utilize these individualized components of everybody, right? Our own individualized person, which is made up of you know, DNA, which is individual to all of us, and using that unique factor and changing it accordingly to be able to you know, attack these gene-borne diseases that we may not have previously thought possible. For example, um, the disease cystic fibrosis, um, which was previously a completely gene-borne disease that they had no cure to, is slowly becoming more curable due to the applications of genetic engineering. Now, along with that, the applications of 5G and artificial intelligence and even augmented and virtual reality could allow something as similar as you know, surgeries being performed remotely through robots um, with a, you know, 5G is a 20 gig per sec speed, which allows for real-time interaction with almost no lag. And allowing that type of surgery would have more opportunity on every end, right? And, and a safer atmosphere for people as well. Um, if we're looking at more of this broader perspective of what youth could bring to the playing field as well, um, I think a big one is normalizing open source content. Yeah. So what that's going to mean is we're going to see more and more platforms and applications that are able to connect youth together. Um, straying away a little bit from you know, some of that short form content that we were talking about, but also playing to that aspect, right? And being able to grasp not only the attention of teenagers, but connect them with each other to build ideas off of each other. So we're going to see more social media applications that not only hyperfixate on likes and comments, but instead start to focus on how we can connect teenagers and ideas together. Um, but overall, I see you know, the world going in a very, very positive direction. I like to say some of the biggest issues of our current generation are lack of educational resources and educational availability, contamination of our natural resources, and teenage mental health are big ones. And I think all of them are problems that we're facing on a daily basis, but since we're living in these times, we have the power to solve those as well. Thank you for that. I'd like to go back to all the themes that you mentioned about the future, because I think they're very hopeful. Like you said, personalized medicine actually look at, at, looks at an individual and maybe what's the biomarkers that are in your blood and uses them to decide and to tell the doctor what therapy is going to be the most effective therapy for that patient. So we're really listening back to the patient. And to me, that implies much more of a human-centric approach, much more of a patient, a user-friendly approach. A lot of these technologies that you mentioned are trying to be more portable and user-friendly. Uh, and the word that really comes to me is accessibility, right? Where all of these technologies are accessible and inclusive. And this is a very hopeful thing to think about in the future. Would you like to add anything, Engineer Sirakam? Uh, the future, I mean, in my mind's eye, there's, there's a lot of positive things. Yes. 
but there's this fine line to say how can we connect to the to the present and the past yeah. and ensure those values have been extended yes. and not kind of drifted away yes. my challenge what i'm facing is the globalization of indifferences and that's where we're trying to uh, through mass customization that's taking place so how to ensure that identities are being retained we're, 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 we're capitalizing on the, the modern technologies, bridging the gap, ensuring it's, it's reaching and accessible. And these are the benefits of, of being an online connected, bringing about communities of like-minded people with the caveat of ensuring we have an, enough of retention and carry over from our values being extended and, and maintaining our identity. Yeah. And I think this is to me just the fine line. How can we cope up yet maintain what we stand and what we're proud of? Yeah, I love that. That's a very important point to mention, especially today. Um, as we're kind of approaching the end, I wanted to sort of wrap up by going back to Gitanjali, just for a few words of inspiration for our youth that are also aspiring scientists and thinking about going into the field of STEM. What would you tell them? Yeah, um, and I think, you know, just I wanted to touch a little bit on this idea of a human-centric approach that you were yes. talking about. And I think that empathy focus, rooting everything at empathy and impact along with the multidisciplinary approach, yes. which we're seeing more and more with the stream um, concept that we are starting to bring up as well. That's what's going to change our world for the better. And I guess on that note, um, a recommendation that I would make to all the students out there is start with the problem, right? Yeah. Start with the problem first. Learn about technology around you and learn about the applications of solutions, but don't feel pressure to put a problem or immediately connect two and two together, right? Learn about each component individually. Start with something you're truly passionate about, right? A problem that you have a connection to and see how you can solve it with something that you are passionate about, something you want Want to learn more about as well and you know stick with that problem stay with it longer because if no one else is going to take that first step you have to take that first step as well and I can say from personal experience that anyone has the power to bring ideas to life thank you so much for that and to wrap us up I want to go back and recall the title of this panel which is streaming forward but I want to pause on the word forward and that word really implies to me continuity it implies to me sustainable solutions that are gonna last to tackle both present problems but also problems of the future so engineer Sarak, I'd like to circle back to you and uh, maybe ask you to, to suggest to us what do you think could be a sustainable solution to continue inspiring them and or stream in our youth for generations to come uh, I see about communities yeah. and that's that's the best way is don't we don't look upon ourselves as, as the people who can solve because again you'll, you'll always be bound by the capacity that you can offer but if you can really can enable communities and, and implant some ideas and make those communities could could connect and we give them the bandwidth and empower them I think that's how it's going to be sustainable ie we reach to a stage where we have science citizens so to me, reaching that stage where everybody becomes an active participant in the solution, by that we can all complement each other and continue. So sustainability to me, it's all about community empowerment. Thank you so much. And I really hate to end this discussion, but I have to really thank you both panelists for your inspiring thoughts. And um, I have to say that I'm really excited to see how far we can go with a stream mindset and a community and a collaborative feeling. Um, and I also have to say, just about last month, we heard about the launch of the um, Saudi astronaut program, which will actually be sending some of us, some of us uh, young future astronauts into space where we're gonna be tackling uh, problems facing humanity. And I just wanted to say that I can't wait to see the magnitude of the achievements that we're, be, we're going to be able to achieve in the very near future, inshallah. I also would like to thank you, audience, for um, being very attentive and for joining us today. And um, yeah, keep streaming forward. Thank you.